Why does she do that? Understanding the female narcissist can be confusing. We typically don't think of women as being narcissists as such, as having narcissistic personality disorder. So when they do, it can be very, very confusing. When you're looking at the communication that you're receiving, first thing to remember is they are not communicating with you as an adult. So everything in the environment would indicate to you that there is you and her and there's two people talking. There is really only her communicating with herself and you are an instrument that exists only in her world, not as a separate person, but as a part of her to interact with. That is why if you deviate from that map, her map of reality, which is not reality, her map of reality, you'll see an awful lot of stress. You'll see an awful lot of criticism. You'll see an awful lot of emotional dysregulation. The typical tools that she will use to attack you, to draw you back into performing as you should in the film that she's creating, will revolve around guilt tripping you, making you feel ashamed and attacking your image of yourself, attacking sometimes your reputation, sometimes your character, but particularly your idea of who you are will be attacked first and foremost. Reactive abuse will be a frequently used tactic because reactive abuse allows her to put herself back into her own story. So let's just go back a little bit. Let's remind ourselves when it comes to narcissistic personality disorder, we're talking about human being whose coping mechanism, whose maladaptive coping mechanism, which means it's bad for her and bad for the people around her. It's ultimately hurtful. That's what makes it a personality disorder. Her coping mechanism for dealing with reality, for negating reality and for keeping reality out is to create a fantasy version of herself, a fantasy version of her life, and in a way to be the writer, director, and editor of a film that she's starring in. In that movie, typically, not always, but typically, she is the star and the victim. So typical for female narcissism is that person will want to portray themselves as being the biggest victim in the room. I first encountered this when uh, my female followers asked me to talk about the experience of what a woman, a daughter could expect with a narcissistic mother. So I went to a place called the daughters of narcissistic mothers.com and I started learning about it there. And women were telling me that they were frequently engaged in conversations with their mother, the female narcissist, where they would confusingly find that their mother was always trying to one up them for victimhood. So if they said, I've suffered pain, the mother would reply, your pain is nothing. You should have seen what happened to me when I was your age, or your pain is nothing. You should see how the, I'm living my life now and what I go through right now. Similarly, when a man is interacting with that woman in that space, not necessarily a narcissistic mother, could be a narcissistic uh, partner, could be a narcissistic wife, you'll experience the same thing. Whatever pain you're going through, whatever suffering you're going through, you'll never get the satiation of really feeling like you're being heard, like your suffering has ever really been acknowledged because it has to go through the narcissistic filter. And remember, the narcissistic filter is there. It has one job. Keep reality, truth, and factual data out so that I can maintain my artificial reality inside of the narcissistic shell. You're only allowed inside of the narcissistic shell if you're prepared to take off your real uh, all of your reality, all of your reality filters, you have to switch off all of your reality filters, you have to switch off all of your moral fit filters, and you have to play the role that they want you to play, which is why for codependent people, male or female, when they're dealing with the female narcissist, they will frustrating, frustratingly find themselves playing a role that isn't really them. And then afterwards they'll be like, why did I do that? Why didn't I tell her no? Why didn't I negate that ridiculous story? Why didn't I challenge her when she said that horrible thing to me, to my girlfriend, to my wife, to my kids, or whatever the situation is? You're forced to enter her reality and to stay there. You're coerced into playing your role. The injunctions that you receive are the following. I am always right. Therefore, 
in a certain sense, you are always wrong. I am superior, therefore, you are always inferior. So if you're always self-effacing, self-humiliating, humble and passive and hyper-agreeable, fawning, you'll be okay inside of her world. If you try to exist as a separate person, you'll hear the following injunction. You won't hear it consciously, but unconsciously it will be delivered. I am going to punish you for having your own will. I am going to punish you from being separate to me. I am going to punish, shame, humiliate, frighten, bully, and threaten and intimidate you now for negating my fantastical version of who I am. You're an actor on set. You have a job to do. Follow the script, play your role, or get out. It's my way or the highway. That's the injunction you're gonna hear. In these environments, in this kind of a psychological setting, how do you have reconciliation? How do you have an adult to adult, authentic, honest, vulnerable conversation? You don't. You must learn to abandon all attempts at sincere communication when communicating with the terminally insincere. All the information you give about what you're doing, how you're feeling, what's going on in your life and who you really are will be used against you at a later date as ammunition to attack you, to attack your sense of self, to attack your reality. When dealing with the female narcissist, which is uh, the smother mother, you will be subsumed into her reality. You'll be absorbed. She doesn't want to know how you feel. She wants to tell you how you feel. She doesn't want to know what you think. She wants to tell you what you think. It's a very invasive, all-encompassing and suffocating form of narcissistic abuse. Ask any man who's been married to a female narcissist. Ask any woman who has uh, a female narcissist as a mother. Predominantly, they will talk in terms of, of claustrophobia and of feeling completely suffocated. The dominance that she wants cannot be asserted. It can't be given to you through assertive commands and demands and threats that are overt. It has to be done subtly. It's very invasive and it seeks to completely eradicate your identity so that she can place her identity into that space. This is frightening and dangerous because if she succeeds, she will possess you like a possessing spirit. And you can see that with some people, they're walking around and they're, we say in the Jungian psychology, anima possessed, possessed by the spirit of an angry and bitter and spiteful woman who believes that she is the biggest victim in the world. Female narcissism is pervasive, it's quiet, it's pernicious and it has a slow drip effect. It's a slow poison delivered carefully and subtly over time. And if she does her job well, she will make you feel like it's you that's doing it to yourself. So it's a corruption of your will, of your intent and of your identity at the core level. If she can do that, she can possess you and then she's won. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time and for your attention, and I look forward to speaking to you again soon. Hello folks, just to let you know, we now have a new course out. It's finally finished. It's called Unplug from the Matrix of Narcissistic Abuse, and it's available from richardgranon.com. Just hit this link right here, and you can go get it.